Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for May 6th, 2024. It's the time of week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Jeff and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython, which is a version of Python designed to run on tiny little computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is sponsored primarily by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing your hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold this meeting in the CircuitPython Dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. The meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes document, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. On the other hand, when you are listening to this meeting, the final notes document will include timestamps so you can skip to the parts that interest you the most. Meetings tend to run 30 to 60 minutes. Um, and after each meeting, there is a link to the next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pin messages to find the link to the doc so that you can add your notes for the following meeting anytime during the week. And of course, if you wish to participate but can't be there live, you can leave your hug reports and status updates in the document and the host will read it out during the meeting. So, the structure of this meeting, there are five main parts. Next up is community news, where we take a peek at the weekly newsletter, uh, which is published by our very own Anbarella every week. The second part is a statistical overview of the entire project called the State of CircuitPython, the Libraries, and Blinka. Then comes time for y'all to participate in the next two parts. We've got hug reports, an opportunity to highlight the good things folks in the community are doing. And then fourth is status updates. This is truly the uh, vegetarian protein of the meeting, and we want to hear from all of you who are working on CircuitPython or with CircuitPython. Tell us what you've been up to since the last meeting and what you'll get up to over the next week or so. And then if we need it, we have a part called In the Weeds. If we need as a community to discuss something, this is the place to do it. You can add that um, item at any time, and we will just go through them in the order those are in the documents. And that covers the structure of the meeting. So with that, I will get started with community news. First up, MicroPython is now 11 years old. And in the notes doc, there's a, a link to an X post that says, quote, MicroPython started life in early 2013 as an experiment to see if it was possible to shrink a high-level language like Python down enough to run on very small devices. Now MicroPython is a mature open source project that is relied upon by a wide variety of users. Second, the project of the week uh, is called the 2024 eChallenge coin. Braden Lane's 2024 eChallenge coin runs CircuitPython and is packed with hardware to inspire the next generation of hackers. It's 350% bigger than previous years, now at 84 millimeters in diameter, and includes a maze game as well as a full text adventure game. And in the notes doc, there is a link to an X thread. A couple more items, or one more item for you. CircuitPython versus Arduino's C++ language for ESP32, a comparative analysis. CircuitPython, offered by Adafruit, and Arduino's C++ language, offered by Arduino with Arduino IDE, stand out as popular choices for DIY projects, prototyping, and educational purposes. Both platforms offer powerful capabilities for developing interactive hardware projects, but they differ significantly in terms of programming language, ease of use, and eco system support. And that uh, report is on the website called thecustomizedwindows.com. So check that out. Oh, oh, there was one more item. My, my eyes deceived me. And that is the Adafruit Learning System exceeds 3,000 guides. Thank you to the entire team at Adafruit who builds and makes learn.adafruit.com one of the best resources online for learning CircuitPython, Python, and more. This has also been on the Adafruit blog a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I guess that was last month. Uh, and yours truly was actually the author of that guide, Magical Guide number 3000. So uh, thanks for the opportunity to do that. So tell me more about this newsletter. How do I subscribe, I hear you asking. You can subscribe at adafruitdaily.com. 
You can also check out the full archives on adafruitdaily.com slash category slash circuit Python. And as I mentioned, the aim is to highlight the latest Python and hardware related news from around the web. And that includes circuit Python, Python, and MicroPython. We want you to contribute uh, your own projects, news that you heard, uh, and there are a couple of ways to do that. You can edit next week's draft directly on GitHub and submit a pull request with the changes. You can also email cpnews at adafruit.com. And uh, you can also tag your post with hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon, Blue Sky, or X. And that wraps it up for the newsletter. There's much more in the newsletter itself. Go subscribe. Okay, let's talk about the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Our lovely Adabot runs a report every night in the middle of the night US time, and we collate those results here and review them once a week. And uh, so across the whole project, we saw a fairly quiet week with 14 pull requests merged by eight authors and four reviewers uh, outside of the uh, kind of Adafruit team member people. I really want to thank DJ Devon3, Just Mobilize, KB3 RAM and Anecdata for your contributions. And uh, thank you to our four reviewers also. Issues wise, there are a lot of new issues, y'all. Uh, we saw 20 closed issues by nine people, which is good. And we saw 118 issues open by 18 people. And um, I don't know what's behind that, um, but we may get to it as we go a little further down the meeting. And now, if Dan would be so kind, uh, tell us what's going on in the core of CircuitPython. Okay, so this is about uh, CircuitPython, core of CircuitPython itself. In the last week, I'm, I'm, these statistics are from Saturday, not Sunday. That job broke. Oh, okay. Sunday. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, so uh, there were four pull requests merged uh, as of Saturday night. Three authors and two reviewers. There are still 21 open pull requests. I believe a couple of these have been closed already. There were seven issues closed by three people and nine open by nine people. And there are right now around 686 open issues for CircuitPython itself. Um, there are two issues that we group issues by milestone, which sort of says when we would like to get the issue fixed by um, or addressed because sometimes it's an enhancement. Uh, so there are two open issues for 10.00, and those are placeholders, just reminders for things that we need to do when we go to the next major version. Uh, there's one open issue for 9.0x. Um, I think I closed that one. There's uh, two open issues for 9.1.0 and 30 open issues for uh, 9xx. 22 open issues that have to do with libraries, 603 that have to do with long-term, those might be enhancements or there might be uh, small bugs. 11 issues that are marked as support, which means we're not sure that they're really a bug. And 14 issues which are third party, which means that they depend on somebody else to fix something before we can address the issue. Uh, it says there are three issues not assigned a milestone and we need to triage those and put them in one of the categories that I mentioned. And that's it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dan. Next up is a section on the libraries, which uh, Foamy Guy will be reading today. All right. Thank you. Uh, this section covers the CircuitPython libraries, uh, all of which can be found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Uh, all of these libraries tend to be kind of... Um, Libraries that are either drivers to help you interface with a particular piece of hardware or higher level helper libraries that allow you to create your project without worrying uh, about as many of the nitty gritty details in your own code. Uh, across all those libraries this week, we had 10 pull requests merged by five authors uh, who do look like mostly the usual suspects, but it's a relatively short list. So let me say thanks and appreciation to uh, Brent, DJ Devon3, Just Mobilize, KB Suram, and Anik Data. Uh, we had three reviewers this week, so thanks to Brent, Dan Halbert, and myself. Uh, of the pull requests that were merged, the oldest one was 34 days, and the uh, newest handful were just one day, like usual. Um, at the end of the week, that leaves us with 64 open pull requests. Uh, the oldest uh, one is a draft, I believe, at 662 days. The newest one is just one day. 
in terms of uh, issues, I can uh, shed some light on the mystery of the 100 issues. So uh, overall this week, we had nine issues closed by six people and 107 issues opened up by nine people. Uh, although that is uh, somewhat misleading, the vast majority of those are uh, just were opened up by one person, which was me uh, when I ran a uh, script essentially to open up some good first issues um, across a bunch of the driver libraries. We talked about that uh, in a couple of the past weeks, and I'll uh, talk some more about it in my status update once I get down to it. Um, that leaves us now with 843 open issues, and we are stocked back up with 102 good first issues, uh, which you will be able to find if you'd like over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is the place you should head if you are interested in getting involved in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things. Uh, at circuitpython.org slash contributing, you're going to find a list of open PRs as well as uh, open issues. There's a couple of labels across the top you can click to switch between PRs and issues. Uh, if you want to get started, the best place that we usually point folks towards are these good first issues. So you can click over to the issues tab. You can use the little drop down to filter on good first issues. These ones have been identified as uh, not being... Uh, terribly complex and maybe being uh, good for folks who don't have as much experience with CircuitPython or Git and GitHub, uh, perhaps uh, even um, light on experience with programming generally. Um, these are all good places to get started if that's what you'd like to do. Um, if you want to get started on the review side of things, you can look at the open PRs. You can take a, list, uh, a look through that list. You can find one that is for a piece of hardware that you have or uh, just have an interest in. You can take a look at the change inside that PR, try it out on hardware if you've got that. Just leave a comment over on GitHub to let us know how it went. Uh, and then once you get comfortable um, doing that, we can also get you leveled up to the review team uh, in order to leave official reviews on GitHub if that's something that you'd like to do. Uh, we do have guides for getting started with Git and GitHub. So if you don't have experience with that, um, we can help you out there. And we also have folks around um, all throughout the week on Discord who are more than willing to help folks get spun up. So if you want to help contribute but need help in some way, uh, please check out the guides. Please come join us on the Discord and uh, ask us for help. We'd be happy to give it to you. Uh, in terms of library uh, pi PI weekly stats this week, we had uh, 128,179 pi PI downloads across the 326 libraries. Uh, the top 10 list is here in the notes doc, uh, as well as the list of updated and new libraries, which is uh, a little bit longer this week, so I won't read all of them, uh, but I will call out the uh, one that looks like a new one in the community bundle is uh, GT911, uh, which I'm not familiar with, but it looks like we got a new driver uh, over there on the community bundle side, which is cool to see. Uh, and that's what we've got in the libraries for this week. Thanks. Thank you. And I am going to take the last section this week while Maker Melissa's uh, internet is being pouty and tell you about Blinka. Blinka is the CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. If you were from the web world, you might call it a sort of polyfill. And it was a quiet week with no pull requests merged. There are six open pull requests. There were four closed issues by two people and two fresh issues opened by two people leaving a net of 93 open issues. Uh, we have some download stats. There were 13,515 PyPI downloads in the last week, as well as 10,653 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month. And the number of supported boards stands at 133. And that wraps it up for the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. So I will transition over to Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll go down the uh, document to give everyone a chance to participate. And if you're text only or missing the meeting, I'll read out your notes when I get to them in the list. And so I have a couple of items. I want to thank uh, Justin for some extreme patience with my reviews of a pull request that improves support for the NTP servers uh, with the ESP32 SPI boards. Um, I was a little bit nitpicky, and uh, but thanks to his willingness to work with me, we got it to a much better place. Uh, thank you to Dan for spotting something to improve in the SSL module as well as starting work on it. And of course, a group hug because y'all are great. Next, I have some notes from Anecdata. 
who has a belated hug for me for all of the SSL work. Among other things, this opens up a worldwide web of new possibilities for Ethernet projects. And then also a hug for Dan H. and Justin for their helpful review and discussions on an ESP32 SPI pull request. All right, that brings us to Dan, and then after that, DJ Devon 3. Hello. Okay, thanks to you, Jeff, for working, getting MP3 working at a reasonable bit rate on ESP32 S3. And that's it for today. All right, uh, DJ Devon 3, and then Foamy Guy. Uh, I just have some hugs for Argon Blue for trying to help with a color space issue. His input was uh, very helpful. A uh, hug to Toddbot for joining the helpers world on Discord this week. And a group hug. That's it. All right. Thanks. Uh, next is Foamy Guy and then Jerry. All right. Thank you. Uh, hug reports for me this week. Thanks to uh, Justin as well as you, Jeff, for improvements across a handful of different networking libraries this week. Uh, and another one sort of related to uh, Anecdata for helping do some reviewing and testing on those changes. Um, thanks to Snaky MakerCat and Discord for helping uh, lots of folks in the help with CircuitPython channel over on Discord. And uh, thanks to L. Pekinen for adding the list functionality to the CircuitPython setboard command um, that lets you access and set your device specific stubs. That's really cool. Uh, new functionality. Thanks. All right. We'll hear from Jerry and then Justin. There are a lot of J's in the meeting today. Go, J. There it goes, the button marks. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, just a, a hug or thank you to uh, Bab Lock B <laughs> for uh, help with and some comments and suggestions about the Pico W memory usage and for his recommendation of the uh, WaveShare ESP32 S3 Pico board. All right. Next up is Justin, and then we'll round up the section with Maker Melissa. Yeah, uh, a lot of duplicative hugs today. So hugs to Anecdata and Dan for helping um, get some common methods into the ESP32 SPI um, to make it match more widths in Wi-Fi radio. Um, hug to Brent for reviewing some updates to the Azure IoT library, again, to get the ESP32 SPI um, kind of on par and working in that one. And uh, hug to you, Jeff, for um, pushing me to make that NTP library better. So thank you all. All right. And Maker Melissa, do you want to try and read your hug reports today? All right, I'll just read it out. Uh, Melissa has a hug for Foamy Guy and me for reading my notes. Oh, while well, the internet has been spotty. Well, I should have read what it said on the screen. And that finishes status. Excuse me. That finishes hug reports, so we are ready to move on to status updates. I just need to move my block up to the top. Bear with me for a moment. So I will read my notes, and then uh, we will go on in document order, which means DJ Devon 3 will be up next. Uh, so I, last week, I finally had a breakthrough and got MP3 working on ESP32 S3. That's in the latest builds now. And this week, I'm finishing up my PyCon US presentation. The conference is the weekend after next. My presentation is titled Connecting Old to New with CircuitPython Retrocomputer Input Devices on Modern PCs. In the notes doc, you'll find a link to my entry on the schedule. Um, it's uh, Sunday afternoon, and uh, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it. Uh, I'd love to meet anybody at PyCon who is interested in Python and hardware. Uh, don't be afraid if you see me come up and we'll have a chat. We could also chat about what the last book you read was, because that was a real fun uh, conversation I had last PyCon. But anyway, all right, the, the document is has changed order, so Dan, you're up, and then TJ Devon 3. All right. Um, so as, as Jeff mentioned, um, I'm looking at something about how uh, storage is managed in the SSL module, which is now shared uh, on both um, in, very, in various places. And maybe this would help somewhat some of the storage management issues that we've been seeing or memory errors that we've been seeing on Pico W. Um, I'm working on bug fixes for the nine release. Uh, you know, as as we progress, the things that we want to fix in nine, and I have some also some internal housekeeping PRs I can do, uh, which are not visible, but they're just sort of um, 
technical debt or formatting debt or something like that that we might do in um, Circuit Python. And also, <laughs> as mentioned, a lot of work has been, been done on ESP32 SPI recently. Thanks especially to Justin for that. Uh, we're trying to phase out uh, secrets.py and also foamy guys been working on that, sorry. We're trying to phase out secrets.py um, and, uh, but the problem is that, it well, ESP32 SPI, when you do a connect, it would take a dictionary as um, for the SSID and password for Wi-Fi. And so that has now been changed so that you can pass either a dictionary or the SSID and password separately. But we can't change the examples now because ESP32 SPI is frozen into a lot of boards. So we, we really need to wait to change the examples and the learn guides and so forth until uh, those libraries are no, the up, frozen libraries have been updated. And that would be maybe 9.1 or maybe 9.2 or maybe even 10. But uh, so we're waiting on that, but it will happen. Okay, that's it. All right, uh, we have DJ Devon 3 and then we have Fomikai. Uh, thank you. This week, I spent my entire week writing a new function for the RA888, that should be 8875, 8875 library that retrieves a single pixel sampled from the display screen, and it involved debugging down to the binary level to figure out how the colors are stored in the register. It's the first time I've worked with a display that has a register instead of an init sequence. Uh, I wrote a playground note, um, just, I released that just a couple hours ago, on how to read the pixels on the RA8875 driver board um, with the hope that others can build on the functionality in the future. Uh, I have yet to submit the PR as cleaning up the messy version of my library after debugging it for a week, probably take a couple days. And I'm hoping that maybe someday, somehow we can get display IO and hardware acceleration like integrated and working together for this kind of display. And that's what I got. That's what I've been working on. All right. And next we have Foamy Guy. All right. Thank you. Um, last week I was doing, uh, let's see, some testing uh, on the files argument for uploading files. That's to uh, the request library, which I failed to mention here. Uh, or no, it is there. I just am not reading correctly. I uh, did some testing on that. I submitted that. And then uh, Justin, uh, belated hug report, did some uh, updates to improve that um, potential feature. So I was testing out the latest version of that, uh, as well as uh, a handful of other networking related libraries. Um, I this morning was working on uh, updating a PR in the AVR prog um, library. This was a PR that submitted some type annotations and it had some feedback from a little while ago. Um, and so I went through and just kind of made all the changes from that feedback and got everything uh, up to date with pre-commit and passing and being all happy with actions and that sort of stuff. Um, I, over the weekend, was working on a playground note for uh, a tool called Postgres with a T on the end server, which is a utility that uh, creates an HTTP API for you um, based on some data inside of a PostgreSQL database. Um, I have written up uh, the page in Playground that covers how to get it set up and how the back end works. Um, but still to come is a section about the front end, uh, essentially pulling data and putting it into a graph on an HTML page. Um, I've gotten that functionality working. Uh, I did on a stream yesterday, but it's not put into the actual playground page yet. Uh, one thing I'm noticing though, is that my page is already uh, quite long. Uh, I should probably go back and make better use of the, uh, the headers that are linkable to kind of split it up into sections and then try to make kind of a table of contents type thing that links out to those different sections. Otherwise, it is uh, just kind of quite the wall of text. Um, beyond that, I did uh, make a couple of tweaks this week on the tic-tac-toe uh, conference badge script that I have been working on uh, in the background that uses the Pymaroni uh, Badger W. And then uh, as touched on a little bit uh, earlier, I, um, a couple of days ago, I think this was on Saturday morning when I did it, finished up the scripts. 
uh, and ran them, uh, which created new good first issues across uh, a handful of the libraries. I think it was 90 some odd libraries uh, in total. Um, these are new good first issues that are asking for the contribution of a display.io based example. So if anyone uh, happens to be hearing this and uh, is interested in getting involved in contributing to CircuitPython, um, there's now a load of those that are open. So um, feel free to, to give those a try and reach out if you need any additional help. Um, but that is what I have got for the week. Thanks. That's very cool. And by the way, are you streaming on Friday this week? E, uh, yes, I'll be on uh, Deep Dive. Scott's out this week, so I'll do Deep Dive. Uh, thank you for the uh, for the reminder that I should put that in here. Uh, yep. Well, I know folks love the streams, and I just want to make sure they know who to expect. Uh, yeah, but with that, we'll go on to Jerry and then Justin. Hi, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> so I spent some time this week and porting the autofocus code from um, the um, Pi Camera library over to the OB5640 library um, so that it can be used with the new Pico Pi Cow Bell camera boards um, so the code works. Um, and I have a, um, there's an issue talking about it and I do have a, a fork with the code in it. Um, it's kind of disappointing <laughs> on, the P on the Pico W. Um, it works. But right now, but with Wi-Fi enabled, there's just no memory. And so like the biggest picture I can use with JPEG is uh, 160 by 120. Um, so it's, 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 it's pretty disappointing. And, and uh, hopefully maybe some of the things that are being worked on will, will improve that. We'll see. But as of now, I'm not very encouraged that, that, that Pico W is really a good candidate for using with that, with that board. Um, as I mentioned in the Hugger Burst, there was a, a mention of a, a WaveShare ESP32 S3 Pico form factor board that looks like it would be, you know, um, certainly much would much better support using Wi-Fi and and the camera. So I have a couple of those on order. Um, we'll see um, how those work out. And then I, I'm going to be gone away for a couple of weeks, so um, I'll get back to all this when I get back. If anybody is really interested in wants to look at it, the code is, is is in the fork. You're welcome to grab it and run with it and do anything you want with it. Um, it pretty much works just like it does on the Memento. That's it. Very cool. And a uh, belated hug report for getting the uh, autofocus working. I'm glad at least that part of the project worked out. But uh, yeah, let's hear from Justin and then I'll finish out with notes from maker Melissa. Yeah, so um, been doing a lot of work in the ESP32 spy um, category, um, both with reviews and some PRs with getting it closer to Wi-Fi.radio. Um, and then some things on a personal note, um, finally got my Matrix Portal S3s um, that were out of stock for a while. So working on updating a few of my personal projects um, that broke with the Matrix Portal M4, specifically with Google and SSL. Um, and I'm looking into some of the um, radio libraries um, for like shortwave stuff to see if I can get them working in some way um, since Python is blocking um, losing packets on those and it's known in the libraries. And so just trying to see if there's a way um, potentially, which might be a secondary MCU um, acting as a buffer um, in between those two. So maybe running CircuitPython just in a very tight loop with fetching those things, or maybe as a second, actually running Arduino or something like that to be really fast and being able to buffer that. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Mako Melissa writes, uh, finished up going through Raspberry Pi related guides and updating to work on the latest OS. Currently going through CircuitPython code editor and fixing bugs and refamiliarizing myself with the code. After that, I will start working on improved communication with the boards. And that wraps up status updates and brings us to In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for long form discussion that can come out of status updates or that folks have identified ahead of time. If you have any In the Weeds topics, please make sure they get added while we're discussing other things so we're not waiting around to see if anyone has topics. 
And uh, we do have one topic today from Michael Pokusa, whose text only, so I will be reading that out. Uh, the, excuse me, uh, it says, I would like to ask about the situation with SSL support for HTTPS serving. Certainly, currently, it seems like only ESP32 S3 boards support this all the way, as other boards have problems with SSL socket binding or raise memory error when trying to accept. At the same time, thanks to Anicdata, Tanute, DHalbert, Jepler, and everyone else involved with the changes that were already merged, that enabled ESP32 S3 to work with HTTPS serving. Some time ago, I created a PR for Adafruit HTTP server that adds easy to use API for serving HTTPS servers, but as I said above, the functionality works only on a subset of boards. Is this feature, meaning fixing the memory error and aligning other boards' behavior with ESP32 S3 ones, currently in progress, not planned, or maybe in a different state? And I see you have a note there, Dan, so I'll let you take it away. Uh, so I'm just saying, as I mentioned, I was trying to do this refactoring, which might fix something about the SSL memory consumption. But it's true on the Pico W, there's just not a lot of memory on this board, and it's hard. It's also true that it's worse in 9 because of the addition of um, USB host and Pico DVI. And we're talking about whether or not to maybe turn those off or have an alternate build. But even so, it does not seem to work all that well on ESP32 S2 either, which has, I can't remember how much RAM it has, but it's, it should be better than that. So I'll just see what happens uh, at McCall and uh, maybe, um, maybe this will succeed or maybe not, but it is important to me to try to get uh, these things working on these boards that are definitely Wi-Fi uh, capable and want to know why they don't work that well. Okay. All right, I see uh, Michael Pocusa is typing something, so I'll wait for that to come in and then read it out. Well, while he's typing that, I'll, I'll chime in. Um, the the issue with the S2 has existed for for quite a long time and has been an issue and the Pico W doesn't have much RAM, but the S2 does. So the S2 should have a little bit easier time. It's just it's been a problem for a while and it's not an easy problem to fix. That's all I'll say about it. All right, and Michael writes, thanks. I remember it used to work back in 8.x on Pico W. And uh, David writes, maybe the Raspberry Pi Foundation is working on a new RP2040-like microcontroller. Let's cross the finger. It could have more memory. And uh, yeah, unless so, somebody... Right, I, I would say try, you know, use 8 for now. <laughs> that, that's not the greatest solution, but 8 was pretty good. And uh, you don't have to go to 9. So. All right, well, with that, I will wrap up in the weeds as well as this meeting. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly for May 6, 2024. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash adafruit, and the podcast will be available on all major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. We'd love it if you would visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held uh, next Monday as usual. That'll be May 13th at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern and 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific time. This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join at any time by going to adafru.it slash discord to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day you can ask to be added to this added to the circuit pythonistas role on discord we hope to see you all next week thanks everybody <laughs>